Friends, today I have brought it again for all of you. Part 8, of the Dragon Ball series, if you haven't seen the parts before, go and watch it, or else this video won't make sense. Now without any delay let's, start this video. Roshi states that he now knows who the man is, after seeing how he and Goku are mirror pictures of each other. Meanwhile, Goku seems to be in a world of trouble as his opponent has a tail and repeatedly slams him to the ground, while Upa and the others watch anxiously. Bulma asks Roshi to help Goku, but the later says that the fight must continue because Goku's rival is none other than Goku's dead grandfather Gohan. Grandpa Gohan repeatedly slams Goku against the floor, as his friends watch in pain, wondering why his own grandfather would give him so much pain. Bulma demands that Master Roshi help his student, but the later refuses, saying that Goku's grandfather has a purpose behind his actions and was never a careless person. Meanwhile, Emperor Pilaf tries on his new power suit, while Shu and Mai are spying on Goku from a satellite, learning from the war with their grandfather that his tail is a weakness that they try to take advantage of making plans. It is revealed that Pilaf has the last Dragon Ball, and has jammed the Dragon Radar using the Dragon Radar proof box. Back at the fortune teller Baba's palace, after being slammed several times, Goku's tail eventually explodes. Although this hurts Goku at first, he is ready to continue the match. Gohan surrenders and reveals his face to Goku, who runs towards him, hugs him and breaks down in tears, as his friends watch with joy. Baba and Gohan explain that there are two worlds, the mortal world and the other world. And she has the ability to bring the dead back to life. However, travel between the two worlds is very specific, Gohan is only permitted to stay in this world for one day. Baba had predicted that Goku would come to him, and Gohan had even approached her and asked as such, though she was unaware that Goku was Gohan's grandson. Goku then shows Gohan the Dragon Balls, and explains their nature and his adventures with Bulma and the others. Gohan thanks Master Roshi for teaching Goku all he knows, but Roshi tells Gohan that he only taught Goku the bare essentials, and knows as little about Goku's strength as Gohan himself does. Gohan is happy for Goku that he has found some good friends and has traveled the world. Upa asks how he can ask to bring his father back to life when Goku's grandfather is also dead. However Gohan chooses to remain dead and disappears after the farewell. The fortune teller Baba then reveals the exact location of the last Dragon Ball, as promised. It is being carried in a red car and Goku is happy to learn that the final Dragon Ball is finally within his grasp. Goku is pointed to the location he needs to travel to and after giving him Upa 6 of the Dragon Balls to capture him while he is away. The Emperor on City Street to receive the final Dragon Ball. Goku flies his flying Nimbus after Pilaf's car. Pilaf is on his way to the fortune teller Baba's palace in hopes of taking other Dragon Balls. He now knows Goku's weakness, seeing the feet on the monitor coming from his satellite and now wants to cut off Goku's tail in order to weaken him. Goku finds the car and lands on it and recognizes his previous enemies. Pilaf challenges Goku to a fight, against all six in possession of Goku with his Dragon Ball and promises a pinky. Pilaf, Shu, and Mai each meet in their power suits. The machines are unaffected by Goku's first attacks, Goku and Shu burn his clothes in the corner of the machines. To Pilaf's horror he finds out that Goku has no tail. Pilaf, Mai and Shu assemble their power suits on a titanic machine. However, using Kamehameha, Goku removes Mai's power suit. Mai discards her broken power suit and rides on Pilaf and Shu, who morph into a bird-like thing with increasing speed as the trio flees. Shu fires a missile, but Goku throws it back, destroying the power suit. Pilaf gives Goku the one-star Dragon Ball and Shu gives him his clothes, covering his private area, because Goku's outfit was destroyed. Goku flies back to the palace of the fortune teller Baba, who has now received the last Dragon Ball from Emperor Pilaf, and takes Upa, who is holding the other six Dragon Balls, to the holy land of Karin so that his father will eventually be found. To be revived, Yamchu wants to train with Master Roshi, who doesn't realize it, but Bulma changes her mind when he suggests she come wearing a new bikini every now and then. At Bora's burial site, Goku summons the eternal dragon Shenron and urges Upa to grant his wish, although he is terrified at the sight of the grand dragon. Eventually, with all his courage, Upa wishes for his father's resurrection. The dragon grants the wish and Bora rises from his grave. Upa happily embraces his father and the dragon disappears, scattering seven dragon balls across the world. Before they can disperse, Goku jumps in and grabs the 4-star Dragon Ball, which had already turned to stone. Goku sends Bora and Upa off and goes back to Baba's palace. Goku tells everyone that the wish came true and Upa's father was revived. Now having collected his grandfather's Dragon Ball, he says that he will no longer be searching for Dragon Ball and plans to start training for the next World Martial Arts Tournament. However, 
Master Roshi says that he has nothing more to teach Goku, and it would be better if he trains on his own and experience the world for himself. Master Roshi tells Goku that he will receive more training by walking rather than riding on the flying Nimbus, so Goku obeys and begins his journey around the world. While traveling through the mountains he sees a girl named Zhao who is trying to hire a tiger thief so that he can come with her to his village and defeat two men named Terror and Plague. Instead the tiger thief takes his money and nearly eats it before Goku can intervene and save him. Seeing Goku's strength, she asks him to help her village, which is being terrorized by terror and plague, which are forcing people to have regular large feasts, leaving the villagers with almost no food. Goku agrees because he believes Master Roshi had a similar thing in mind. When they reach the village, they see that a roll call is there, when a person's name is called and he doesn't answer here soon enough, this person will be sent inside a mist gourd, an item used to trap panic and plague people. Goku shows up and challenges them and easily defeats them one after the other. Unfortunately, Panic uses Gord and traps him. Goku manages not to fall into the bottom of the ground thanks to his power pal and is able to escape. He takes the ground and plays with the sinful pair by repeatedly calling their names. However, they are unable to survive and both get trapped. They apologize for their actions and Goku releases them. They now work for the villagers, plowing the fields with the threat that if they go off the line they will be trapped again. Goku says goodbye and travels to the forest in search of a new adventure. Goku has taken his first steps into the unknown world. Train your mind and body diligently. Carrying stones ten times his size and walking on steep mountains on his bare hands. Rain or unbearable heat won't stop Goku from pursuing his goal. To train his mind, body, and now regenerated tail through random real world experiences, so he can win the next world martial arts tournament. Goku's training takes an unexpected turn when he loses control and begins to speed up the mountain with his hands. Goku's tail again saves his life when he clings to a tree branch to avoid falling into the valley, as he remarks that his tail is stronger than ever and it never breaks again. Ironically, the tree branch breaks off instead. Goku falls, but he uses his hands to absorb the fall and slips off a handstand. Goku, exhausted and looking for competition, asks an old lady where the nearest city is and sets off on another adventure. He is informed that there is a man named Master Chin, who seems worthy of his skills. When Goku arrives in town, he finds Master Chin in contention. It appears that Master Chin's son, Shokan, has stolen the wallet of the Rising Dragon, and is backed by his goons. Master Chin is forced to defend himself and his son. Master Chin leaps into the air and performs his trademark move, the Phantom Star Technique, but ends up coughing which the rising dragon takes advantage of and begins to beat Chin. His brother, the sky dragon, arrives and slaps him so to speak and apologizes for his brother's rude behavior. After the skirmish, Goku asks for a session with Master Chin and he accepts. They hardly have a match. After briefly attacking each other in the air, Chin's illness takes hold. Goku and Shokan put her on the bed and started making small talk. Goku asks for the name of the trick used against the thugs. Shokan replies that it was Phantom Star technique and that his father created it. Master Chin further explains that the technique uses an energy to project an image that does not exist, like the after image technique. Shocked Bum and his father scold him because he is not ready for this kind of technique. Goku on the other hand is capable because of his training and discipline. The conversation quickly turns to the dilemma of Master Chin, who is in dire straits and in no shape to fight for the title of Master of Martial Arts. Sky Dragon's Panther Fang School and its brother Rising Dragon have threatened and banished all their students. The only chance they have to bring him back is to win the title of Master of Martial Arts. Master Chin's condition is deteriorating and he needs medicine. Goku volunteers, but is warned about Sky Dragon and his gang, as they may be too eager to pay a bit. As luck would have it, Goku passes the restaurant Sky Dragon. The Rising Dragon attacks Goku. Goku easily dodges the Rising Dragon and tricks it into falling into the river. The sky is not happy. He attacked Goku without warning. Goku makes another try and hits even faster than the last time. Sky then declare Goku unworthy and leaves. Back at Sky's Panther Fang Dojo, his disciples become punching bags as he tries to teach them a lesson in combat. It seems that no one can beat him even with his hands tied behind his back. The next morning, Shokan asks to fight at his father's place. Chen refused. Then, Goku volunteers but does so to improve his training. Shokan was still angry about his father choosing a stranger over his son, while angrily fixing breakfast. At least I have enough skills to do this, shouts Shokan. Desperate to prove his worth to his father, Shokan takes matters into his own hands. While preparing the meal, Shokan puts a pill into Goku's soup. Goku eats food quickly without any notice. It's match time and Goku doesn't even look tired. 
Shokin now stares with concern, astonished that Goku hasn't passed out and the match is about to begin. Sky Dragon from Panther Fang School and Goku from Chin Star School are about to challenge each other's abilities. Goku goes after Image to lose Sky. There are about 30 different pictures of Goku dancing, so Sky breaks his Panther Cyclone and attacks every image until Goku is found. Goku decides to end it forever but his stomach turns on him so he has to call a timeout. Sky got suspicious and gave his hoax. Only Goku is not fake. He attacks Goku without mercy. Now Goku is furious. They both jump up and launch a signature attack. Sky's Panther Cyclone against Goku's Phantom Star. Goku's dazzling combination of 50 fists and kicks proves to be enough all at once. Sky Dragon is defeated with a single punch and sent off for a knockout. As the crowd chants Goku's name, he turns around and screams. Back at Chin's dojo, Goku is thanked by Sky for showing him the error of his ways and for helping Chin restore his reputation and bring back his students. Shokin's guilt is not forgotten and Goku apologizes by making him breakfast for his long journey. Goku starts a new journey. Goku's travels take him to a small village that is terrorized by dozens of demons. The town's princess, Princess Misa, has been kidnapped by these sinister creatures, and King Crest seeks Goku's help. Goku dares to go to the underworld to bring the girl back and fights with Shula who is responsible for taking her there. He successfully saves the princess from the demonic tyrant Shula, and closes the door that lets the demons out into the world of the living. Later, he encounters Tian Shinhan and Kiyatsu, who are making a scam pretending to defeat the demon in Ashikacho for a lot of money. Goku eventually foils their scam. Three years later, he meets the fortune teller Baba once again. Goku rescues a green fox companion named Konkichi from a group of thugs. As he misses his plane while helping Konkichi, who befriends him and refers to him as his brother, Goku swims across the world to go to the tournament. Thank you guys, this is the end of the video, please make sure to like the video. It takes only one second, but that's a lot for me. Okay guys, good luck.